Hi everyone, I'm Ferd and welcome to my video. In this one, I'm working on a fairly big project. I've got an owning generator that come off the back of what I refer to as a bucket truck that was being worked on by probably somebody that shouldn't have been working on it. And he caught it on fire and burn up the whole front end of it. Now this was a fuel injected generator and what I'm doing is converting it to a carbureted generator. In this video, I'm showing you how to rebuild the carburetor that I got. I bought one off of eBay and the reason why I did that is because I didn't want to use an aftermarket eBay, Amazon carburetor on it. I wanted the commercial carburetor for it. And the one that I'd bought needed to be rebuilt. I want to stress to you right off the bat that the carburetors that you can find that match this one that are fairly cheap on eBay and Amazon are not commercially graded carburetors. And you will have problems with them. I promise you. To buy a brand new carburetor from Onan or Cummins, Robin, Subaru, wherever you find one at, you're talking between four and six hundred dollars for one of these things. Very, very expensive. They don't offer kits. The kits that they do offer are the carburetor. I found a kit from a different carburetor, and I'm going to show you in this video what I found. Before we get there, hit that like and subscribe button. My channel's growing. Help me grow it some more so I can keep putting these videos up here. I can expose a lot of these little bitty secrets that these manufacturers keep from you. And also offer some of my experience as an old man and all the tricks that I've learned over the years. So subscribe, ring that bell. Pretty soon I'm going to put that video up of how I converted this motor over to a carbureted engine. You'll get notified of that. Here's the video. Let's rebuild this carburetor and I hope you enjoy it. All right, here's my carburetor and intake that I found on eBay. And anytime you buy something from there, the pictures are always kind of deceiving. It's been cleaned up, but something I didn't notice in the pictures is this silicone that's all over this freaking carburetor. And it was all around the outside of the bowl here where they had the seal from the bowl goobered up with this blue silicone to keep it from leaking there, I guess. but. I'm gonna have to rebuild it. You know, after I got it, I got to looking at this thing. And I'm like, man, that thing looks so familiar. And I thought, that looks just like a freaking Kohler carburetor. So I went to dig it. And this is a carburetor, it says Cub Cadet tank on it. It's one of them big zero turns with the steering wheel on it. From what I remember, I had this one up here in my stock. And this is for a Kohler on a Cub Cadet. And this is the one off that Onan. I mean, they're the same freaking carburetor. All around, identical. The bowl on this one is shaped a little different. And I'm almost thinking about just using this one on it. But I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this one. So what I did is I bought a kit for a Kohler carburetor like this. Here's a kit I bought for 15 bucks. You got a new float, new needle valve, a couple new screws, the gaskets. They're identical to the, the one I've got in the box. Take this off of there. There's the float. The gasket that goes on it. 
here's the new and the old needle for them. Identical. So, <laughs> if you need a kit for your Onan generator, here it is. It's a, if this is not it, I'll put the part number for it up here on the screen. But that's a Kohler carburetor. So I've got a kit to rebuild this one. Okay, you see me just kind of pull everything apart there, but when you take this bowl off of it, there's going to be a little washer. This one right here goes right there. There's a new one in that kit. Just be aware that that one's there. I want to take the jet out of the middle of it in order to do that. Now, something I want to clear up here real fast is I referred to there being a jet up in there. There is no jet up in there. These are just quite simply two air fuel mixing tubes. The jet's in a different location and I'll show you where it's at a little later on in this video. There's two pieces in there. You pull this top cover off. Peel this gasket back. And then right down in here, you can get a screwdriver in there on that. And we'll unscrew this one out. And then we're going to pull this tube out. And we can flip it over and then go down into the bottom with a, our other screwdriver. This one here, I got it shaved down the sides to where it fits down in these carburetors. And screw that one out. Finally, after a lot of tapping on the side of there, it took me a few minutes, it finally came out. So there's that. Got that out of it. And get that cleaned up. I'm going to set it, the whole thing down in the carburetor clean and let this stuff soak for a little while. And I'm going to take a screwdriver and just pop that cap off of the adjustment screw down here. This is kind of critical. This part that I'm getting ready to take out is a needle valve. This is your jet. Similar to the old type lawnmower carburetors that had that little screw on the bottom of it that you could adjust your fuel mixture with. This is the same thing except it's on the side of the carburetor. You could just leave this thing alone. Make sure that if you do, that you take some carb clean or something and make sure that that chamber is dirt free before you put it back on. If you choose to take it off, you could do what I didn't do and pop the cap off, mark it, and count the number of turns that it takes for this thing to go down and bottom out before you take it out. And then you can use that as a reference when you put it back in, you start at the bottom, screw it back out that number of turns. Maybe it's one and a half, one and a quarter, one and an eighth, whatever it may be. You'll know just about where this thing should be when you put it back in there. And then we can go ahead and take that out. Okay, I'm going to test this solenoid. Make sure it's working okay. You just need 12 volts. There we go. 
so this thing's good. Let me get that off of there. Soak it a little bit. Got a half. And this is a number 15. Let it soak about 20 minutes, scrubbed it, got it nice and clean, and the carburetor ain't in too bad a shape. Other than those gaskets that was on it, it was kind of screwed up, but anyway, I'm ready to put it back together. All my little jets, I made sure all the holes were open in them, shine a light down, make sure I can see light through them. I'm going to start with this one right here, and you can see how far up on it the threads are they're like way up in there I guess that's one of the reasons I couldn't get it out but anywho we'll screw that down in there make sure I'm flat Give it a little oomph thingy there. There we go. Now the reason you have to take this out first is because it pokes up beyond where you can get your screwdriver down on that one. So this has to come out first. So we're going to put this back in. It goes back in second. And while we're up here. Might as well put this back on it. And I normally don't do too many carburetor videos because it's like they're all a little different, but they're pretty much the same. Just match you up a gasket set for it, tear it down, make sure that thing is sparkling clean. Use an air hose and blow through them little holes gently. I use, uh, I think it's called Berryman's carburetor cleaner. The stuff is real good when it's brand new. The stuff I've got is several years old. I mean, if you got a metal can, the can will rust and it'll leak out before it actually goes bad, but you let it soak about 20 minutes. Uh, if you have to, you scrub it with a toothbrush, blow it off, and then I've got a bucket of water over there. I'll dip it down in there and rinse it off with water. And you'd be surprised how much more dirt comes off of them after you dip them in the water. I made sure this little brass seat down in here was nice and clean. We'll go ahead and put our float on there. Get a new float, a new needle, and even get you a new pin. And if you look at it, it looks level straight across. That's kind of what we're looking for. Next, we got this gasket. I might have to stretch it out just a tiny bit. Take it off there and like give it just a little stretch. And let's see if we can get her on there now. There we go. Fits right down in there. It's a rubber band and I just kind of pulled it apart a little bit. Just a little bit, just enough to stretch it out. And I want to put this back together. On here. There we go. And we got this big washer. It's going to go over it like that. I 
I'm, I'm going to face the bowl straight out this way. And then we're going to take it back off. <laughs> and I told you earlier about this washer. It comes with a new one. There's a little tiny washer. We'll put, I'm going to go ahead and push this up there. Got the washer on that, and I got this tiny one that goes right there. And I'm right down there like that. Look at that number fifteen. Tighten it down here. I'm down to this thing. And this big old spring on it. This has a little O-ring on it. I'm going to turn this all the way down till it stops. Right there. This screw that I'm referring to is this thing. <laughs> This is bluntly your jet. This adjusts the amount of fuel that flows up through the pipe of that carburetor. It, to adjust this thing, I've turned it out one and a half times. We're going to have to put it on the engine and get the engine running to get it to that sweet spot. Once we do, then we can put that cap on it and it can be adjusted for whether you're up in the mountains or you're coming down out of the mountains and you need to fine tune it to get it to run to that proper altitude. This one here is a drain for the gas to drain the carburetor out. So we're just going to screw that one down. All the way down and just give it a little bitty little turn like that. The screwdriver didn't fit it. And there's our carburetor. One last thing that I'd like to share with you is the choke assembly. This is a page out of the service manual that gives you a description and a little bit of instructions on how to adjust this choke if you need to do that. The only thing I can add to it would be be careful when you take this thing off that you don't lose any of them little tiny clips that hold those rods on there. Well, I'm going to have to leave it there. My next video, I'm going to put this carburetor on that burnt up engine. If you want to see that, hit that notification bell up there. I really appreciate everybody that's been subscribing to me lately. My channel's growing like kind of fast here lately. I don't make any money doing this, but I do enjoy doing it. And by you people subscribing, it just encourages me to keep putting videos up there. So thank you all of you. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. Join the club. Help us grow. And if you've got one of these owning generators and you're having carburetor problems and you want to rebuild it like I just did, have fun! <laughs>